All right, in compliance with the open public meetings law, I wish to state that on June the 21st, 2013, the notice of this meeting of the Township Committee was posted on the official Township Bulletin Board, mailed to the Cape May County Gazette, the Atlantic City Press, the Ocean City <coughs> Sentinel, Ledger of the Herald Times, and filed by the Township Clerk. Tonight's meeting is being video recorded and will be available on UTTV Channel 2 and on the Upper Township website. I hereby direct that this announcement made a part of the minutes of this meeting. I would ask all to rise for the salute to the flag. And Christopher, if you wouldn't mind to come up and lead us through the Pledge of Allegiance, it would be greatly appreciated. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Barbara, would you call the roll? Mr. Barr? Here. Mr. Poison? Present. Mr. Nsara? Here. Mr. Newman? Here. Mayor Palumbo? Here. All members are present. Okay. Would someone like to make an approval of the minutes from June 10th? Uh, we would like to make an approval. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes. Okay. Second. Is there any corrections, deletions, omissions that anyone's aware of? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Nsara? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. This time we'll go through the uh, governing body. Uh, Barbara, do you have anything for us? I have nothing this evening. Okay. Daniel? Uh, nothing at this time, but I do have uh, two items, contract negotiation items for uh, closed session. Okay. Paul? Uh, thank you. I do have a couple items. Uh, I just want to report that we did uh, receive bids last week on the um, trash vehicles and uh, containers. Uh, we're still reviewing uh, the different parts of the bids, and we hope to have uh, some recommendations at our next meeting. Okay, and, and um, I would ask that if we can get that done this week, that gives us a week to, to get it. So if you could, Barbara, try and make sure it's in our packet for, for next coming or next week so that we'll have a week to look over it. Very good, yes. Okay. Uh, next item, I just wanted to update the committee on the, uh, the, the beach access pass and the, uh, the bird, nesting bird issues. Uh, we did get approval to go out there and uh, clear some additional pass. We were out there actually today, and we also installed some additional ADA uh, path matting on some of the other beach accesses to uh, improve access. Uh, there are still two entrances that we still can't get to because there are active chicks at the at the base of the entrances so we're not allowed to do any activity in that location and talking to the representatives this morning uh, they did tell us that Strathmere is their uh, best beach so far uh, in Cape May and Atlantic County for uh, nesting birds they've had the most success rate uh, from anywhere else in the state at this point so uh, um, you know, we're, we're doing good as far we're, as we're playing our part for nature yes we are yes we are <laughs> um, and I did happen to see some residents out there where we're working and I think they're very appreciative of, of what we we're doing and some of them did understand you know once we get back out you know once the plovers and the nesting birds leave towards the end of july that you know if we can get out there at that point anything we can do uh they'd be appreciative to, to help <coughs> out. okay um the next thing uh it seems like we've had the a run of part-time hires that say they want to work but then don't want to show up and, and do the pre-employment testing so uh, again i'm asking uh, uh to uh hire uh, Kevin Day, uh, we've confirmed with him before this evening that he does want to come and work, and, uh, and so we would make ask that we uh, hire him as one of our uh, fourth and last part timer for the season for Public Works. Would someone like to make that motion? Make a motion. Second. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insara? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Um, next, uh, the Sands Gold Station, just want to give everybody a little status update on that. If you had been by there over the last week or so, you, you would have noticed that uh, all the tanks had come out of the ground and the hole has been backfilled and so they'll be continuing uh, that process of doing the soil investigation to determine the extent and uh, the, the cost for the soil remediation, groundwater remediation for that site. Um, but, but at least the tanks are out of the ground at this point. Um, and then next and final, the uh, 
paving project over on Seville Plantation. They completed that work uh, about a week and a half ago. Everything turned out very well, so that uh, and we should be able to close that project out and uh, have that concluded. And I just would report that I don't know the final tally with the dollars, but you know when we closed on that subdivision bond, the surety company paid us a dollar amount. Uh, I think there was probably ten or fifteen thousand uh, dollars or more left to the township coffers that are going to be returned to uh, the general fund after the project's completed. That's so we made out on. Uh, negotiating that one. And that's all I had this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Barbara. Just have one item this evening. Um, our tax assessor is organizing another blood drive. Uh, it's going to be July 10th. And in the past, you've given um, any employees that donate blood that day during the drive go into a uh, lottery and one name is pulled for a complimentary day off. Um, tax assessor is just asking that. Um, that we've done again this year, if you're agreeable. I'll call the roll, please. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Nsera? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Mr. Newman? Ah, yeah. we're, we're, we're changing things up since we're going a different way now. This video is uh, making this very interesting, so go ahead. Okay, uh, first I'd, I'd like to, um, uh, as, as we build up part-time employees for the summer as well, I, I need to make a couple of part, uh, requests for part-time hires uh, as well. Um, once again, this does not change our budget, it does not increase our cost at all, it's just more of a pool of people that's available to, uh, to respond or to, to, to work. Uh, I want to uh, like to hire both uh, Matthew Hone, okay, and Judy May. And Judy May, as you might know, is uh, one of our recent retirees, and she's now going to be hired part time. So, and she wants to come work. And I can check with Barbara, and that is permissible after 30 days. So, I'd like to make that a form of motion. Okay. I'll second that. Any discussion? <coughs> Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insera? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, we also have, uh, obviously, the big 4th of July celebration coming up uh, this 4th uh, of July. Surprising, <laughs> Which is a week from Thursday. <coughs> Here it's all the 4th. We're just playing for this. Uh, we have uh, good contact with the uh, station commander out at bar the barracks and uh, I've made all the necessary arrangements to so once again have a new parking zone on Route 50 from Sunset Drive to all the way down. I think this year we're going to go all the way down to uh, 610. Um, uh, I think Paul, I don't talk to you yet, but uh, we'll make arrangements uh, to have those signs put out there. We've already co we're already coordinating that and getting that ready. July. And once again, if we could just emphasize anybody that's uh, uh, walking around out there, excuse me, coming to the fireworks. There are a large number of parking spaces in Amanda's field that are available and are closer than parking on Route 50. You can also get out right after the fireworks are over with. It's very easy to get out. We'll have, uh, we'll have the state police and county uh, sheriff's officers there uh, helping, helping them out. Uh, it's been, the park has been exited within 15 or 20 minutes uh, in the past couple of years without any problem at all. And there's a large number of parking spaces available to you. So please, don't park on Route 50. We don't want you to park on Route 50. Uh, and in fact, if you do, your car will be towed because uh, it will be part of the, uh, part of the emergency parking uh, restrictions that are put in. Uh, I've also uh, I've got a phone call about um, <coughs> some uh, potential problems or issues with uh, sight, sight lines at some intersections where we might have some stop signs or some trees in the middle of uh, in the middle of the, the, uh, the areas and it doesn't give you a good clear sight of heading down the road. Uh, I, ch I checked when our, our ordinance requires the zoning officer to go by and handle that. And I will be requesting that the zoning officer go out there and handle some of these. And it's, uh, what will happen is the, the zoning officer will, will go out there and notify the, the resident or the owner of the property 
that the uh, that there's a problem with the tree or shrub or bush or whatever or a vehicle or whatever and have that uh, order to be removed. If not, the township uh, uh, road department is authorized to go ahead and uh, remove that stuff and assess the lien on the property or charge them for that removal. Uh, so if you do have anything like that, I think we in the past the public works has gone around and Call traditionally the public works in the past is uh opinion on that kind of stuff because obviously a lot of equipment and the trucks and uh they uh grandma team notice it and they turn it over to the zone officer. Maybe we could uh, get a message down to the public works area if they can keep their eyes open and listen a little bit. I'll uh, be a little proactive on some of this. Usually the street we usually have the street sweeper take care of that since he's out driving most of the streets and, and close, uh, to the edge. close to the edge. So uh, <laughs> You know, we'll, we'll have some of the guys to redo a list and um, get it over to uh, the zoning officer and see if we can can't take care of it. If I could make, make a suggestion, there's a lot of municipalities on the websites. They have an interactive uh, reporting section on there, so they put something on the website where a citizen sees a street sign down or something like that. You know, our guys are all throughout the township all the time, so you know, if they see a hazardous condition, you can report it over the the Actually, we just that just went live probably within the last week. Okay. That was one of the upgrades that we did to the website. So uh, I've actually started. I think I've received three over the last okay. week. So people are already actually starting to see that. And um, now do we have a mechanism in place as far as like when a report comes in, who gets channeled to? Yeah, yeah, well, I've been receiving emails through that through that as mm -hmm. well, not beyond my normal um, email address. And Barbara's been forwarding to me. So are you? You must be checking it because yeah. you've sent me several, or someone from your department sent me several. All the trouble reporting ones come directly to me, and then I'll funnel them out back to Public Works. There is a contact, uh, you know, the office. You know, so that's where a lot of the ones where Mayor, you've get them in the clerk's office, and where we've changed it now, where the um, it's a drop-down box where you can kind of pick which office, you know, whether it's tax collector, treasurer, clerk, Public Works. And that's a you know just a, a simple contact us kind of a thing to uh, get uh, out there. Maybe we can go a little bit further, like with, uh, which Ben was suggesting. I think suggested is maybe it be a little bit more prominent on the home page as we talked about. I, I believe it, I believe it's on the front page. Uh, I was looking at it today. I don't know if I was. Out there. Does it say something like report a problem? No. Yeah. That's maybe report a problem. Yeah, something in the column, maybe. You know, it's just a suggestion once again. And unfortunately, it might be a little bit easier to, uh, unfortunately, it might be a little bit easier to get to. I, I will, again, compliment the job that Mr. Corcoran's doing on that website. It is becoming more and more user friendly, um, and it's becoming a real access um, opportunity for information. Uh, and, uh, you know, he really is, he's entered into that phase two where he's really drilling down and fine-tuning a lot of those um, links and, and uh, drop boxes. So it's come a long way. Uh, yeah, I think that, that, that might be a good idea to ask him if he can do that, just a little bit more time. And also, I think, uh, I don't know how, Paul, when we, uh, last week, we, uh, we, uh, we recorded a bottle of church and station. I see it was fixed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did they do? Yeah. Did you call right there to the county? Or did you, yeah. I reach out to I reach out to the uh, the road foreman for right. for the whole county and reach out to the, I email him directly and then he dispatches the crew uh, to, to take care of that. Well, once again, anybody can do that. Anybody, the county also has a, a pothole reporter right. uh, thing right on the county website, and they can also do that. I think that um, you know riding around and, and understand is a very very difficult winter. The freezer and fall, and the, the, there's a huge number. Oh, so, <coughs> there's a problem on Roosevelt Boulevard there too, right? The, at Route 9 and uh, at Roosevelt as it's coming together. I mean, I think we ought to try to stay on it if anybody out there sees it, let's get out there and report it. I do think it, it, it carries a little bit more weight when it comes from you that also if we can have one of that report and I'll let you know. Okay, no problem. Okay. I, I think that's all I have. At least anybody got questions. <laughs> Well, you got the other one over here. We talked about the last time, the back of the on the Nine and uh, one of the uh, old Tahoe. We would have come to the area, but here it was not. 
It's him. Yeah, that's that's a separate. Uh, that's not that's actually a county thing. They're they're negotiating and trying to get the utility company to come out and take care of that. And also the one that's the by Fred's Yeah, that's the one. The one by Fred's Auto. That's a utility company patch that they're waiting for the utility company to come out and fix it. And it's been over a year. It's probably been longer than that. Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Curtis? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, at this time, I have nothing. Okay. Anthony? Um, thank you. Uh, the, uh, when I, on, when I first got on, I uh, talked about the uh, zip codes, the airline zip codes. It's almost a year and a half now. And still, there's nothing. Uh, what's the status on that? What are we waiting for? What's no, um, actually, we had gotten a rejection. From from Belmar, we 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 have um, appeal, you know, through Congressman Lobiano's office, and he's doing what he can on his end. But uh, because of the consolidation, a lot of things that the, the Postal Service is doing, that there's a resistance and pushback. But um, I don't think that at any point we've tried to not continue that process. Um, but the initial. Response from U, uh, United States Postal Service from Belmar was that um, that the capacity, and I know it could be argued, but the capacity of more and more can't handle all the zips. You know, I, I'm not one to question that because I don't want the inside. That's patently not true. I think. Well, it is. I, I I can. Well, we we did just to be clear. We did challenge that. We right. did appeal it, um, but they rejected our appeal. Right. And I think the Congressman's office is aware of it, but there was no further appeal. The Postal Service just said no. Well, okay. See, it's not a matter of convenience. Whether or not you get to be well, I, I don't disagree. I just, there's no further appeal, though. Well, well, can we at least try to get to the uh, Bank of the Insurance Commission to try to change the rules as to how they apply these various insurance companies? You could, but that's going to be a difficult undertaking because it's it's national that they do that, and, and it's not just New Jersey that requires that, and that's, it's a private enterprise that makes a decision as to how they're going to set their rates. It's not regulated. I don't believe it's a regulated item on the New Jersey yeah, Department of Insurance and Banking. We have, you know, we, I, I would think that we could set some standards for that. I mean, we have people that are paying too much for homeowners insurance. They pay too much for auto insurance. Fire departments are losing money. Yeah, uh, well, we can look into it, but I don't believe that New Jersey would regulate that, the Department of Insurance and Banking. It's an internal rate setting. By the, by the insurance companies themselves. Um, however, um, you know, I guess we could look at it and well, contact the Department of Insurance like, just to make sure. Right. But as far as the Postal Service and changing the zip codes, that, that's my understanding is Congressman Obiando's office has essentially said there's no other repeal, and I, mean, I guess we could keep asking, but. Well, I think we should, because it is the boss. You know, and the tax rate, I pay more for something that they should be paying more. Well, I, I think the, the, the one thing that we should, you know, ultimately do, because unfortunately there are a number of zip codes, uh, depending on the location, where you're at in the township. And I think we should, again, really identify to make sure we have them all established, because where I do think that there are s some issues with, is with insurance and, and some premiums and those kind of things is where there's overlap, and it's compared, uh, you know, I'm not talking to one municipality or another, but, you know, comparison in you know, crime and those kind of things could play a, a factor in it. And so, um, you know, we, need, we probably need to determine that. And we certainly can try to do something with the, with the uh, insurance and banking. Uh, we can look into it, but, but as I said, I believe it's more of an internal <coughs> private contract type thing with, a, with the insurance carriers. Um, but we can look into it. We can obviously file a complaint with the Department of Insurance and Banking if, if, you, if you have a concern. Um, uh, um. Without, without, it, 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 not disagreeing with Tommy, because I think that, that, that what he says is correct, but there's a couple of key issues here. Number one, we've talked about for public safety and interest, okay, because of the right. zip code, it's confusing, okay? The insurance rates that I think we're talking about have a lot to do with um, if, if you have a certain zip code, your real estate value changes, okay? And people, yeah, that's it, people right. are. So, so that hurts our real estate values, okay, in, in, in town. I'm not, I'm not preaching to you, I'm just looking at you. Because you're over here now, and I'm over here. So <laughs> I, I can actually see. So, so the real estate values are affected. 
Uh, we'll also just talk, can we talk about it, is the New Jersey Fire Association has a percentage of, of out-of-state policies written. And we feel, although we've had it investigated and been denied as well, that some of that money does not go back to the township that it's supposed to. Right. But the big thing is public safety. Probably more than anything, you know how many calls we get for issue of you that are wrong. And I'm once again looking at you instead of out there. So, so we need to, I think, approach this from a, uh, you know, with all those other reasons, but from a public safety standpoint. Every postal service employee that I've talked to, okay, and this is anecdotal evidence, obviously, says that we are not being told the truth by the higher ups. Okay, we're not going to tell them anything on the record because they're still employed. That these guys are keep looking to keep their jobs in the wrong. You know, it doesn't sound like just a rant or something like this from an employee. It sounds like employees say, "Look, this is wrong." These, there's no way this this post office, for example, the more post office, was built to handle three times the mail it was handled before. The, the only thing I can suggest is that if you want to go back to the uh, postal service to try and consolidate and, and address these issues, the only thing that can be done is contact your congressmen and your, and your senators, because at this point, the Postal Service has indicated to us, and we'll, we'll bring it out, I think it's been six or seven months that the Township Committee has copied on it, um, that there's no further appeal. So you, you have to have the U.S. federal representatives for New Jersey and our congressional district do something beyond that, because they are the representatives of the federal governments. Exactly. Well, why the mayor, something that we can say, look, we want to a meeting with Congress, or, or I don't know if we can get that or not, or somebody in his office and tell them what the problem is, and then we feel that the Postal Service is still lost. Let's get the Senate and the Senate and the Senate and I know they were involved in our in our prior appeal. Now, you know, we can resurrect it and go. Is that, is that agreeable to the. To oh, I have no problem with that. I mean, then again, I, I think, you know, to Dan's point, I mean, we've had a number of correspondence. We can continue to do that. Um, but we, I, I think we also need to consider a different option uh, just so we're not appealing the same process that continues to be denied. You know, so I, well, I'd like to kind of sit down and strategize this a little bit with Dan. We'll write a letter specific, um, you know, to the issues and, and, and continue to go at it from a public sa safety standpoint. Uh, and, and try and accomplish it that way. And, and if I may, just one other thing. I know we talked about this months ago when it was an issue pre previously. Appraisers are professionals that are supposed to take in various things into account. There, there's no law that says they have to go by zip codes, right. okay? Um, that's their prerogative or their decision maker. You get one appraiser that may understand the, the, under, the situation with zip codes in Upper Township, but if you get an appraiser for a bank that's a national bank that gets their stable out of, out of Trenton, they don't have any idea. And that's a problem that I'm not sure legislation, the only thing that could address that would be the Postal Service changing the zip codes. There's another I'm going to take, but I think the primary guy, but personally, the primary guy is public safety, because that's what we're going to do. Yeah, I understand. And, and as far as the insurance, we can check with the Department of Banking Insurance to see if there's anything that can be done. Now, I, I, I would like just direction. Uh, we're, we're going to reach out to Congressman Lobiandos for the clerk's office and the mayor's correspondence, and then um, I'll look into the Department of Banking and Insurance. I'll be happy to send you some key points. You know, I, we have that in our appeal. Our appeal was pretty thorough. Um, I think you may have even reviewed that when we appealed it to the Postal Service. Um, and you're right, the responses were not uh, reasonable. Anything else? Uh, I had some people, you know, congratulating us on the, uh, uh, the weather we had. Some, they also expressed the desire to have the uh, lady, uh, the uh, uh, you know. Well, we, uh, it's my understanding we don't have the technology right. at that point, and we haven't had anything budgeted because that, that would be an extensive amount of investment. I don't know that I'm opposed to that, but I mean, I'm not I sure that we. Streaming it um, right. is, a, is a lot more expensive than the equipment that we have in place at this point. It, it's doable, um, but it's a matter of, of budgeting and allocating the funds. And I'm not sure that this will be the year to be able to do it. I think we're in a six-month trial. If this pans out, it's something we can discuss at the it's next not budget meeting. Um, 
Not opposed to it at all. Okay. Ed. Just one thing we're aware as you're aware, Mayor, uh, we attended a meeting with the Upper Township Football Association and some uh, parents, and it looks like uh, we've got some dialogue going, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be kicking off a uh, uh, good football season this year. Yeah, and I, I'd like to compliment both the board, the five members of the board, and the five representatives of the parents because they sat down and you know, it was kind of a, a little contentious at first, and um, I think everybody came to a common cause, and that's to get the season back in place, and everybody was willing to compromise. So I, I think both sides did a, you know, great thing getting together, and uh, I was happy that you and I were able to facilitate the meeting, so. Okay, I have just a few things. Um, one, uh, beyond the uh, resolution for the lifeguards that's in, in this, uh, we had, had to have an extra uh, tryout. We've had um, several of our um, guards that were hired that have taken on positions um, mainly because some have graduated from college, some have uh, migrated to other uh, beach patrols. Uh, so, um, and again, same kind of statement that Jay made. This is not over and above what we normally have, and this is in addition to what we have. This is to fill in the gaps for those that are missing. So, um, there are four uh, of the uh, ones from the uh, that are named in the resolution from the original tryout, uh, and these are uh, five more names that I'll add in as, as a separate resolution to be memorialized at the next meeting. But we need to get everybody in place because they want they're ready to start rookie uh, school tomorrow, so that everyone's ready for the July Fourth weekend. So, I'd like to make a motion that we hire uh, Griffin Grimes, Gage Bobbitt. Kyle McKelvey, Aaron Myers, and Dylan Price. Second. Any other discussion? Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insara? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. And, and, I, and I will add that there, there was actually um, a full um, water rescue over the weekend. There was a child that was being pulled out and under, and um, our guards were able to go in and uh, take that person out of the water. Uh, it was a, a, a great tribute to the training and, and the skills that they have in place. And, and I actually believe in all sincerity that they saved a life over the weekend. So my mom, my, my mom. she heard me say that. She, now she will. My wife was over there. So she saw that. <laughs> Can we cut that, please? <laughs> you're, you're on TV. There you go. My mother. <laughs> was not there, my wife was. Yes, and I happened to be there as well, and it happened during the tryouts. Um, and um, they did a, a fantastic job, and even the EMT person was down there to assist, so uh, they're be, to be congratulated. That's what they're there for, but you know, I think sometimes we take it for granted because we just think they sit there and whistle, and they really do do a great job. Um, the other thing I wanted to remind uh, everyone uh, to just further add to July 4th is that there is a Fourth of July parade, the traditional parade that Strathmere has, um, and that that starts at 10:30, uh, and um, certainly everyone's invited to that. If you haven't had a chance to experience it, it is really um, a real Americana type thing, uh, uh, and um, it's really worthwhile to go and see it. So um, I suggest yeah, that you do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all I have, um, and at this time um, we, we have an opportunity to acknowledge uh, an Eagle Scout presentation, and we're going to honor Christopher Holman uh, on a, attending uh, the designation of Eagle Scout. And I'd like to call Christopher up if he would, and um, I'll read the resolution as we traditionally do to recognize and it says, um, Christopher Holman of Troop 55, Tuckahoe, New Jersey, has recently achieved the designation of Eagle Scout in the Boy Scouts of America. The township wishes to acknowledge this outstanding accomplishment. The township committee extends its sincere congratulations to Christopher on the occasion of his receiving the designation of Eagle Scout and commends him for his outstanding accomplishment and the completion of his Eagle Scout project consisting of maintenance of the Strathmere Dunes on Commonwealth Avenue. Christopher organized a Christmas tree sale, fundraiser to purchase the materials, and then cleared out the shrubs and poison ivy, leveled out the sand, and placed 3,000 dune grass and rugosa rose plants. 
Township Committee extends its congratulations and best wishes to Christopher's parents, family, and friends on this happy occasion, and that the Township Committee also extends its congratulations and appreciation to the Scoutmasters and others who give so freely and generously of their time for the benefit of our youth. So um, this is a real timely project. We obviously had um, a lot of disruption um, because of uh, Hurricane or Superstorm Sandy, whatever it's called these days. Um, so this was a great contribution um, and greatly appreciated uh, with, with the work that Christopher's done. And not to dis diminish in, in, in any way uh, uh, lower how, uh, how difficult it is to accomplish being an Eagle Scout. So that in itself is uh, a great tribute to him and I'm sure he's uh, going to take advantage of that and move on and, and have a great career. So congratulations. Thank you for, um, for your work with the Dunes and, and what you've done. Uh, in fact, um, Paul, I'm sure you would, you would certainly agree that um, our Dune system uh, has really replenished itself substantially since the storm. I mean, it's incredible. And, and things in these kind of projects have helped. Yes. Anything we do out on the Dunes can help protect the infrastructure and property, so it's, it's a great project. And it may be one of the reasons why we have extra nesting birds in Strasburg. <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> well, you're certainly welcome to stay, but if you have other things to do this evening, um, that, that's okay too. But thank you again, and thank you for your service to the town. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Barbara, you want to move on with the resolutions, please? Okay, item number two, resolution and certification with respect to the 2012 annual audit and in compliance with the local finance board of the state of New Jersey. Move the resolution to second. second. Okay, everyone had a chance to review the audit. Great job by everyone. And uh, like I told you out last meeting, this is uh, the findings and recommendations. The auditor had zero findings and recommendations, which is a plus to our staff. Here in town hall and a wonderful job they done. Yes. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insera? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Item number three, authorizing a professional services contract with Jersey Web Design and Francis E. Corcoran for the maintenance and development of the Upper Township Internet website and other technology related tasks. Let's move and again, uh, I'd like to reiterate that um, Mr. Corbin is doing a fantastic job with the website, and uh, uh, we certainly appreciate his work. So would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insera? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Item number four, appointing the 2013 season Beach Patrol personnel. Move the resolution. Second. Okay, and this is addition to the ones we had spoken earlier. Carly Cox, Mary Ellen Curran, Kevin Gill, and Anson Hadley. Let's call the roll, please. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insera? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Item number five, authorizing the Upper Township Tax Collector to extend the third quarter grace period. Sorry. And this is because we had trouble getting out the bills. Is that what happened this time? It's not. We, have, we need to save certain money okay. our city, and they haven't approved the budget yet. They were voting on it today. I don't know if it was approved or not. Yeah, it's not anything the township has done. It's because of the numbers are slow from the state, and it's just not to charge people interest. It's to extend the dates for payments. Okay. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insera? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Item number six, resolution renewing the mobile home park licenses. You should, you, you should abstain. Okay, let the record reflect that Mr. Um, Corson is abstaining. Uh, he's not an owner of a mobile park, but you are an um, uh, owner of a Can't campground. So. I'll move the resolution. Second. Would you, uh, any discussion? Is there any grounds for the or anything? 
No. No. No, we haven't had any issues. Nothing recorded. Let's call the roll, please. Mr. Barr? Yes, sir. Mr. Corson abstains. Mr. Sarah? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Item number seven, authorizing the Township of Upper to enter into a cooperative pricing <coughs> agreement for HVAC services with the Upper Township School District for the 2013-2014 school year. Move the resolution. Second. Okay. Um, who gets the business? Township or school? School. Schools lead agency. I don't know the details on it. I'll defer to uh, Barbara uh, we've done Spiegel. This, probably, this would be our third year that we'd be participating in it. So, and, and this is mainly we use this for the uh, servicing hourly rate, because it's usually a much better hourly rate than what we that we get uh, individually. You know, if we call for service. Uh, however, when, when there's a capital type project, you know, something needs to be replaced, a major part needs to be fixed. We usually still go out and get three price quotes because we have found. That in in that's in, with their uh, bidding, the prices come in a bit higher than what we could get competitively in a quote process. So so we have traditionally gone out if we have to replace an air conditioning connector or something like that, we usually get a uh, three price quotes to just verify and make sure we're getting the best quote price. And you say we meaning us? The township. The township. The township. I'm not a fan of school, so I'm asking. Uh, it's not safe. It's a joint venture. We're, we're using their cooperative, we're, we're cooperative pricing with them. It's not exclusive to my knowledge that we could go get another vendor, correct? It actually saves us money and saves them money. Okay. They have to do it because of their procurement process of how much dollar value uh, they do for HVAC work. So they always, you know, during the year, are going to exceed the uh, the bid threshold, so they bid it for a service contract during the year. We don't have that issue. We, we almost would never exceed our bid threshold during a year. Uh, so we always go out and get quotes. However, when we started talking with the schools and looking at what their service rates that they were getting through their cooperative bidding, um, they were much lower than what we were traditionally getting. So we thought that it was best, and, we, and that's what we review every time they come in and we look at their uh, service prices and their They've always been cheaper than what we could get uh, on the open market. Has, um, has the school submitted a budget for the year? For the year? Has anybody seen it? Yeah. The, the full budget? Yes. Has it been submitted? Or anybody has seen it yet? They don't submit it to us. Yeah. When they went to November elections, Tony, they don't yeah. submit. When they go went to November elections, it, it, if they don't go over two percent, it doesn't get submitted to the voters. Right. Therefore, it doesn't come to the township anymore either. Right. It doesn't come to the township. Well, no, they, it's a public document. Anybody in the town can go look at it and and review their budget. But it, it, in the past, when they had a failed budget. By law, they had to come to the township, and the township had to review it and and either cut it further or make recommendations or whatever. All that process changed when they went to November elections. And they go, if they go over two percent in any one year, then it has to go to the voters again. Yeah, I mean, why, why, why I mentioned because I mean, that's last reading, it was very common that the, uh, the repairs that are supposed to go for that uh, were not in the budget, the school budget. I'm just one I knew. Well, they have the cost. They have the cost of the materials that we're going to be utilizing as part of the projects. Yeah, I mean, the question was that you know, say that. Well, before we get before we get to those issues, though, we're we're, we're kind of getting off of what we were actually talking about, and that was the shared services. So, um, so they've already done it. They've already done it. These are the results of the of the bid. Any other discussion? Which call the roll, please? Mr. Barr. Yes. Mr. Corson. Yes. Mr. Nsera. Yes. Mr. Newman. Yes. Mr. Sarah. Yes. Mr. Newman. 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 Yes. Yes. Motion carried. Item number eight: Renewal of an alcoholic consumption license to Lavari Lavari Land Incorporated for the license year commencing July first, two thousand and thirteen. Second. Okay, and this is just the follow-up of one that wasn't completed at the last meeting. Yes. Uh, if there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Bar Mr. Yes. Barr? 
Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insera? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Item number nine, appointment of Louis A. Bonato as an appraiser for the Township of Upper. Move resolution. Second. And we need to this one here? That the, this is a, an annual um, appointment. It was expiring, and uh, the only time we really call on Mr. Bonato is if we have these small lots, 25-foot lots that neighbors like to buy sometimes and add to their lot, that uh, lots are owned by the township. Uh, to basically sell off small lots, and that requires an appraisal, and uh, he has it, uh, uh, given the township a, a fairly reasonable price of $400, and this way he is approved each year if we get one of those so we don't have to go out and approve him uh, or get somebody else to do it. Um, it's up to you. This is, I think, the second or third year we've done this. If we don't use him, we don't pay. Well, that's exactly. He's, he's, he's basically, we see it's basically the applause. Yes, and we, we generally don't pay for that. It, it's, it's a serve the, the person that comes in and wants to buy the land pays for the appraisal yeah but but we have taken that into consideration when it comes to the overall expense for doing it. right that's why it's a reasonable fee you wouldn't want if the lot only costs two thousand dollars some appraisers charge fifteen hundred mr. Bonata understands the situation and and that's why he's offered to do the appraisal for four hundred he's, he's a he's a township resident as well and again you should note that it, this doesn't occur any expense to the, to the township the expense and the coverage of this fee is, is handled by the person making the request. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insera? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Item number 10, authorizing the disposal of blank banking, banking checks which are no longer of use to the Township of Upper. Move the resolution for discussion. Second. Obviously, we're trading. Yes, we are trading. Deposits like 10 shots. That too. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insera? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Item number 11, authorizing the mayor and township clerk to sign a memorandum of understanding with the New Jersey Office of Emergency Management for FEMA funding. Uh, move the, re the resolution. Second. And Paul or Dan, just, you know, I, I know that this is a requirement uh, to get the funding and, and opportunities for grants from FEMA, but. It's, it's a requirement for the process to, to uh, for us to get the funding. We're the subgrantee. We have to have an agreement with um, uh, FEMA and I believe the State uh, Office of Emergency Management um, uh, because they're the, the grantee um, and it's a standard requirement if we're going to get the reimbursements from FEMA. It's, it's allows, it allows us to track and, and view uh, how the payments are being processed when I mean, they've been authorized through FEMA. If you remember several years ago we were always questioning you know did the beach project get authorization did the state receive the money when was our reimbursement coming so it allows us to track which projects we have out there for uh, reimbursement through the uh, FEMA disaster aid and how they're, how they're going to get paid, uh, how to submit for final payments and, and close out the projects. Okay. Any other questions? Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Sarah? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Item number 12, authorizing the engineer to prepare specifications and solicit bids for the 2013 road paving project and reconstruction of Ocean Avenue. Okay, would someone like to make a motion and a second for discussion? So move the resolution. Any discussion? Yes, it's what we move forward with heavy votes and these are the same roads that we discussed that we had a supervisor's meeting last week and we discussed these uh, roads uh, at that, that time and supervisors, you know, we're in agreement with the roads that, that of the list that we put together and uh, within the budget dollars that we proposed. Uh, the only item that we'll probably take separately out of that bond uh, and we kind of discussed that a little bit last week is we did receive some quotes and I'll probably have that prepared for a resolution at your next meeting um, for the to replace the uh, stop and street signs to be in accordance with the uh, 
uh, manual uniform traffic control devices and federal regulations um, that we'll see a significant savings. Um, where we were initially anticipating close to $23,000 uh, for the cost of the signs based on our previous quotes that we've had for sign materials, uh, we've had a low quote of $17,750, um, which is also close to 10000 to 11000 less than what state contract vendor was. So uh, you know, that will be a significant savings. But uh, the streets are what we prepared, and they're pretty much the same list that committee saw at the time of the budget hearings. Now, now getting to the signs, is, is that a replacement generally of all the signs, or is that a replacement of those that have been identified that no longer have proper reflection and those kind of things? That's um, all the street sign, street name signs will be replaced because the, the, uh, the federal government changed the sizing of the letters uh, to make them more visible to the public at nighttime. Uh, so the, the letters, and, and we have a couple signs that we started replacing that. There'll be larger letters, and there'll also be, uh, right now all of our street name signs have all cap, capital letters. Uh, so all the new signs will have first letter caps and all the rest of the letters uh, lowercase. Uh, but then it'll replace all the uh, stop signs and speed limit signs to uh, meet the reflectivity requirements. Now, I, I know that some of the poles, especially where we've had some, some accidents in the past, have the reflector on the pole as well. W will we be doing that and replacing those? Uh, like the yield signs and stop signs actually have the same color on the pole that reflects. There's someone, uh, uh, there's a old Tuckahoe Road, there's someone stagecoach. Yeah, we, we have a couple out there. Uh, that, that pricing does not include those okay. uh, reflective strips on, uh, for those. Yeah, because I think the county must be using them. The county, the county uses those in you know high, higher traffic or, or areas where they have issues, whether it's on a curve or a, at a particular stop sign. Uh, you say the front of the is mended in this, right? Correct. Okay. Are they getting paid for it? No. <laughs> They're the federal government. They don't have to. The state, the state they, does the same thing. Yeah, they, what the federal government does is they say if you don't comply, they're going to withhold your federal uh, trust fund uh, transportation dollars, which are billions of dollars. So uh, they have a, a different stick that they wield. As for the streets, what, uh, you have streets here? Yeah, there's an attachment. Yes. Uh, I don't understand this. You know, last year we had the same thing, and the streets were left out. Um, we talked about it before. It's something that, you know, I, I don't feel the streets need to be done. Um, I know I'm only one here. I know that. Um, I don't still feel it need to be done. I know that but my, my driveway at home was cracked or needed repairs. If I didn't have the money, we surely won't go on about the morning to the driveway. I will wait till I have the money, though, and then though. Well, now we're going to ask people. I'm sure that you know I'll, I'll, I will do that. Not people will do that. But you're going to ask them to pay for streets that they can wait. The, the problem is they don't need to be paid. You're right, Tony. But we can no longer plow snow because we're going to start tearing these things up bad. So I mean, we have to make a decision. And to reconstruct our roads is a lot more expensive than repaving. So we can save the money now by not repaving and spend three times the amount of money in the future and reconstruct it. And, and the reality is, is you know, we, we really have a responsibility to try and keep our infrastructure in place. And, 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 and can I finish, please? And, you know, we had a conversation earlier on potholes that are developing in a lot of areas that, that need to be addressed. Uh, and, you know, we, we hope to have our, our uh, counterparts from the county take care of that. And, you know, maintenance is, is extremely important because, you know, some of these roads haven't been repaved in over 20 years. And, and, and some are probably more than that. Some are probably 25 years. I think one was 79 or something. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you, I understand the need to, to be cognizant and good stewards of the, of the funds, but we also have a responsibility to not let the infrastructure dwindle and deteriorate so much that it ultimately costs a lot more money in the future. Um, and we've had some discussions as to right now, the, the, you know, the interest rates in the bonding are about as low as they'll ever be. And in fact, there's been recent talk that the federal government is going to start upping the amount of money that, or, or at least the percentage of the prime that they're giving to banks. So, um, you know, I, I, I think it, 
it behooves us to consider this and consider it seriously because we have kind of resisted doing any road repair over the past, what, how many years now, Paul? We haven't done a road job since 2009. Right. We have not paved the road. It's been four years, and, you know, we've tried to keep it, you know, intact and not, you know, have any additional expenditures. But we do have a responsibility to get these roads repaired. The 2009 job was done in the federal or state grant, I believe. No, we still did. We did have a grant for Peach Orchard Road, but that was exclusive of the roads that we did. And also, if you look at the list of roads, many of those roads have never been resurfaced since they were constructed, many of them back in the 50s or 60s. Yes. And a street's only supposed to, you know, an asphalt street, its useful life is 20 years. We actually, when we had our auditor here at our budget hearing, we talked about the bonding process. We talked about the procedure. Right now, we're paying on a bond for our future punishment. That was going to be paid off when this bond becomes rolled over. And with perfect timing, the residents will see no tax increase. Can I continue? Yeah. Yeah. We went, we approved the bond. And the first thing was said, if there was a meeting, we want to spend the money. Why? I understand the states, some states are going to be debated. I also understand, as I said, and I'm sure anyone, anyone on here will not do a driveway in a house unless you have the money to go. You're not going to go out, borrow money that you don't have, and there's no way to pay it back to do your driveway. Why would I not apply that to the tax credit of the township? Well, I think you have to understand that most towns actually are not in the position we have been in the past. Most towns traditionally do bond to do infrastructure and do repairs. And, you know, we had been in the minority over many years. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we now, because, you know, we've had substantial cuts from the allocation of money that comes from the energy receipt tax, which is really why, you know, we've gotten to this point, you know, that we can forego taking care of some of these repairs. You know. Repairs, exactly. Well, I don't know that repairs takes care of the problem. There are a number of streets that have substantial cracks. And, you know, I mean, they're to the point where if they aren't repaved, as Curtis says, they're going to have to go through a major construction project, which one road could cost us as much as 10 of these repavings. Just as an example, Coventry Lane, they have areas that are 10 by 10 in an area where the surface course of paving has just peeled off. Patch it. It's too large to patch. It's too large to patch. 10 by 10. How is it too large to patch? You can't patch it. You can't. You don't have a paving. Why not? Because it just continues. Every time you go and peel it up, the next piece falls off. And we cannot patch the whole road. If you do it 10 by 10, if something else comes along, you do it like the rest of it. That's what this is. That's what this is. We're going to attach a 10 by 10 asphalt road to shovel the road. All right. All right. I don't see a reason for that. Well, I don't see a reason why we spend this money on money that we don't have. There is. We have it in the bond. And we did agree. I believe it was you that said we don't have the money we've got to spend it. No, I think the discussion was, Tony, that we would vote on each individual item as it came along. And that's what we're doing this evening. We're having a discussion and we're having a vote on bonding whether or not we want to go ahead and bond or put out for bid to make some street, you know, street repavements that need to be accomplished. You know, I mean, I'm sure the people who live on these roads will tell you that, you know, they need to be done. And, you know, we've had... Well, we asked them how much it's going to cost them to see if they want to pay for it. The cost, we talked about this before, we talked about this in our offer. When the bond is up for a beach replenishment, this bond will roll over and there should be a zero tax increase to accomplish this mission. And in the meantime, we can receive good news that we've been approved for the Army Corps project in Strathmere, the Lulland Island project, which, by the way, will save a substantial amount of monies that we have incurred in the past when we have a significant storm for our allegation. In fact, we may well not have any amount of money that we have to pay. We're still waiting to hear the final tally, but 
That's great news. And that's the point of laying out not just that. But, but in the same respect, we, we made infrastructure repairs there to protect the properties there and protect the infrastructure of the roads. And, and, and so we're doing the same thing here that we're, we're improving and making the, the improvements that need to be done, uh, here in, on, on the mainland as well. There's actually roads in Stratford. I drive through county streets, states, cities, and I know, I know what I say. You drive, drive through Ocean City, and it's, it's far apart. I don't see them going out. I, I see a road project there every year. It's, it's, it's the Tony. underground, underground infrastructure. It's done. The city's not paying a dime for that. It's the utility companies that tear the streets up and then we pay it when they're done with the infrastructure. Well, there's a number That's of street projects going on there. Yes, I agree. That. So every summer, you're right. Oh. From, from September to May, in June, there's nothing but not another street infrastructure going on. Because the infrastructure, the underground infrastructure, gets replaced. Once that happens, the utility companies replace the city, not o the city. Ocean City has spent well over this dollar amount for road reconstruction yes. projects. Well spend, over this amount. Well, they got to spend four million dollars for, for their flooding problem. Just for road reconstruction, they've yeah. spent more than that. They've done nothing. The, the, uh, the utility companies are the ones that pay for that. Um, yeah. uh, Tony, there, there are some. Uh, my practice is in Ocean City, and I represent developers that develop major subdivisions and whatnot there are some areas where utility companies recapture and have to repay because of openings however they have a paving project that is bonded each year ocean city's bonding is much higher than upper townships yeah i mean there's always road repair and you know and that's that's part of our our responsibility to ensure that our infrastructure is protected back it's not because the infrastructure is collapsing they have to be built, so the street has to be opened up. Mr. Mayor, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Take a vote. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Ansara? No. Mr. Newman? Yes. Ms. Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Motion is carried with Mr. Ansara voting no. Item number Item number 13, public hearing and final adoption of ordinance number 8, 2013, and ordinance amend and revise general ordinance chapter 7 of the Code of Upper Township to provide parking by permit only in designated residential areas. Okay. Uh, is there any comments before I open it up to the public? Uh, just a quick question. Look at the here Is... Uh, yes. Upon publication. Upon publication, yeah. And and uh, the clerk's office is already set up to try and expedite it for the residents over there. And I guess Paul can get some signs out um, if there's if there's any contractors using the street now. Yes. Uh, yes. So. We have some of those signs. And okay. Hopefully, I mean, we'll have to order signs because those will be parking by resident permit only. So we'll have to order those signs. Okay, so at this time, is there anyone from the public that would like to address the ordinance 8-2013, um, uh, which is Chapter 7 of the Code of Upper Township to provide parking by permit only in designated residential areas? And that is on Harbor Road for the construction of the bridge. Yeah. Harbor and Cove Road. Yeah. It's to alleviate, it's to help the residents that live on those streets uh, because we anticipate significant contractors uh, coming to the project site and they, we didn't want them parking in front of everyone's houses. Okay, since there isn't any public comment, we'll close the public portion and entertain a motion to adopt. I'll make a motion that we adopt ordinance number 8 of 2013, noting that there was no public comment. Second. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insara? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Item number 14. Elma Lou Painter requests to vacate a portion of Elm Avenue between Block 291 and Block 292. Officer, I look at this, Dan, and uh, if we vacate the street, it would be continued upon a deed of consolidation? Um, I'm not sure what zone that's in, Paul. Is that a residential zone? Yes, it is. Um, does it make a difference in terms of the size of the lot? How many lots they get out of that? Um, they own a significant well, amount of land there, by, correct? By, by 
there are only road frontages along Mount Pleasant Tucker Road. So you know, they're only going to have uh, improved road frontage at, at that location. Um, the Block 291, they're going to need all of that plus, you know, all the way down to probably lot one or two of the other lot just to make the minimum lot size. So it would probably be something that you would want to, to request a, a deed of consolidation of okay. both of those blocks for the properties that they own contiguously. It's in the Tuckahoe zone? Yes, it is. Huh. The other problem we have there is record volume? Yes, it is. And it's been in compliance since then. And they've been making their payments timely. So, so Dan, in this particular situation where someone lives on, has property on either side, because we've had issues right. where, you know, there, there might be, you know, different people. Yeah, I don't think you need off. to notify any of the neighbors. You just need confirmation from Paul that there's no foreseeable future need for circulation or a street in that area. The, there is no need, and, and the applicant is the adjacent owners of both of the sides of the street. I would be in favor of it if it was continued upon a deep consolidation. Because if we begin with, right, we don't want to make lots con contiguous so that they could potentially develop on the land. So is that, I guess, can we table it until we get an answer to that question? I mean, that's a standard condition we typically... Well, it's not standard condition in um, street vacations. Usually what happens is street vacation, half of it goes to one owner and okay, so on one side and half goes to the other, and that's what would happen here. So lots 1 and 14 would get, get the street. Um, and then you have one through fourteen, and and one through uh, in two different blocks. I mean, you could probably include that in the conditions because you have to send them a letter of what they have to do as far as acknowledging payment. But we don't want to spend the money in for the street vacation ordinance until. Right, but they're usually given that notification that they have to pay that deposit fee up front, so that we okay. could just include that in that condition. If, if we vacate the street or grant this request, they'll have two buildings. They'll have a house on one lot and they'll have an extra cover. <coughs> but, but they would actually, they, they really wouldn't because they'd have to improve some road to get there because they have no road improvement frontage on any other street. So they can only build one house without a variance because they don't they don't have any way to access us. If they try to create a second lot, they don't have any way to access it. But if we grant it. Even then, without. Without no, them trying to improve normally. Couldn't they grant an easement to the, for the, drive, no. the driveway? No, because that lot is so narrow, you couldn't put a house in a structure and uh, there wouldn't be enough room to uh, put that house and structure in an easement. Um, I, don't, I don't believe there's any word would approve that because of the narrowness of that lot. So, but we could, Dan, we could make a motion um, contingent upon the deed restriction, and then they, you know, they if, if they don't acknowledge that they will do right. that, we, we just don't do the ordinance. Exactly. Now, one of the questions I do have is um, the ownership of lot one, block 290. It doesn't seem to appear on this sheet. 290. It's the one that this. They probably didn't do it because it's Elm not Avenue. Do they own that? It's Excuse me? It's not affected by the, the street vacation, so it probably wasn't included it was in just the list. Included well, it is contiguous to the street vacation. But they wouldn't be getting any portion. I understand that, but you're, you're landlocking that to some degree, right? No, because they're... You still have... But, but I mean, it their does... Their is off of Mount Pleasant Tucker Road. <coughs> I, I understand that. But does that owner know that... I mean, that this goes to Mr. Palumbo's earlier question. Do we have to notify anyone in the area? And that is someone who who is in that area that has access to that street that may or may not care that it's being vacated. And usually we do send notices to those people. Correct. Isn't that what you were asking earlier? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can. It just it wasn't well, something I think that we typically... I thought that was owned by the painters, but I see it's not listed on the it, sheet here. It's not owned by the painters. It's not. Then, then that, it, if we're following up standard procedure, then we would probably ask those folks, not probably, we would ask those folks whether or not they have any opinion. So, so then before we make a resolution, it would sound to me that we should certainly reach out to, to the adjoining neighbors, as we've done in the past, and, and see what their feelings are. Okay. Yes. Um, do, do you want it brought back to you, or do you want, if we, get an, if we don't get an objection from that neighbor to, to move forward with the ordinance as to uh, the street vacation as long as they comply with the conditions of payment of the expenses and the deed of consolidation. Yeah. 
Yes. Oh, so you're saying do the resolution contingent well, upon the response? Well, no. We'll, we'll bring it to you as an ordinance introduction okay. if we get the correct answer from the owner saying I'll, I'll consolidate and from the adjacent property owner that I have no objection. Okay. If, is that the sense of the yeah. committee? That's what you'd like to do? Okay. Um, do you don't need any motion to that effect? No, I think we can bring it back and it, you'll vote on it when it comes back as an introduction if it comes back. Okay. All right, so let's go to the next item for the uh, Greater Tuckahoe Merchants Association. Move we'll for Second. Let's call the roll, please. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insera? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Plumbo? Yes, and they'll be having their Mr. annual Perry. kayak canoe race on Sunday, April 4th. Item number 16, disposal of building at Sam's Golf Station in Tuckahoe. <clears throat> I need to call a look into this. Um, traditionally, we get uh, money for uh, an allocation where we're allowed to dump a certain amount free at the landfill and dilapidated structures fall under that. And this would be a prime time to, what we have, 40 tons? We have 40 tons. 44. 44 tons available. Um, so this would be a perfect time. We would have to procure the cost of the demo and, and put a lien on it. There would be no dumpings. And, 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 and our code official would have to certify what's required under the, the, the ordinance and statute. And, and also, just to be clear, because this does have an environmental issue, the township is not taking possession of the property. The owner will be notified. The owner will be given the opportunity to, to, to take down the building themselves. And if not, then we would use the appropriate uh, legal uh, mechanism. I haven't responded yet. She hasn't gotten back to me yet. But I, before we would proceed, you know, that, that would be an answer we'd have to find out, as well as Dan probably looking at the review of uh, but that would be their responsibility to take it down. Well, if they don't perform the work, then we leave it to go in and take it down and charge them or... Well, we put a lien. We charge them, but we put a lien right. on the property. I mean, chances are the owner is not going to take it down because that's why we're handling it the way we are because the owner is in financial... Doesn't have the means financially to yeah, take on that. Yeah, doesn't have the ability financially to do this. Can uh, probably works for that here at the owner? I, I've talked to Roy about that, and he believes that, that we can take it down safely and in, in a safe manner uh, with the equipment and materials that we have. And I think we should do that. Tear it down and get rid of it. We still have Yes. And it has to go through the process. The code enforcement has to send out notices to the owner. They have to have an opportunity to correct it. And if they don't, under the, the legal requirements, we would then be authorized to go in and do it ourselves because of the dangerous condition of the property. And it'll actually remove a blemish off the... Well, that's not the reason you're doing it. You're doing it for safety reasons, not for aesthetics. Technically, it's probably going to have to come down for the soil remediation anyhow. <laughs> And we're not involved in that as owner yet because we don't own the property and uh, we're just trying to expedite the, the review and remediation on behalf of the owner. So can we make a request for the, 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 the construction project? Well, I think what Paul wants to do is utilize the, the, uh, the provisions of the, 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 I don't know if it's grant money or, or whatever the resources are available for the, the tonnage. At the, the tonnage. It's, yeah. it's the reimbursement or allowance to the Kimmy County municipal as part of our actually our shared services with the utility authority. Landfill. He'd like to use that if, if the code enforcement says the building has to come down, public works would then do that and then may use this funding to, to dispose of the building. I think you just give Mr. I've, no. I've already talked to Mr. Kenny regarding this. In other words, we, we actually looked at it while we were out there doing some of the tank removal and noticing how much more in disrepair it has been since the last time we visited the site. So that's, all, that's really, you know, besides knowing this has been a, an issue before, but that's really what prompted that uh, discussion and wanting to move forward, is that condition. I mean, I think it's... So it's already been decided, it should be taken down by uh, Mr. Kent. No, we have to do the final, we have to do paperwork to, to right. follow it up. I think it's a win-win for the community if we get to remove it and put a lien on the property and recoup our money. 
So do we, do we accept that as an application? Well, no, I, what we're doing we was give, give your township engineer direction if code official says the building has to come down to use public works to, to, to take it down if that's appropriate and then also to use the, uh, um, the abandoned building credit. Would we utilize dumpsters or truck? We would truck it. So then you would calculate man hours and stuff to come up with the amount of money that it costs us to? Correct. Correct. We'd, we'd establish a force account and just keep track of the or time and materials and, and use that as a cost basis. The bill is not the thing. No, it's not. Okay, so would someone like to make a motion to that effect? I'll make a motion. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insera? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Item number 17, resident request for street lights on Bryan Road and Cedar Grove Drive. Paul? Um, over the last uh, month or two, I've had requests from two different residents in two different locations regarding uh, a lack of street lights in their neighborhood. Um, on Bryan Road, uh, that development uh, between Bryan and Arnold and, and Fight Avenue, it almost it at all the street intersections in that subdivision and even some intermediately, um, there are street lights, except at the corner of uh, Bryan and Arnold. Uh, so just from a safety standpoint, I think it'd be appropriate just because of the number of street lights there are at the, um, the intersections, not have this one. It might lend some uh, safety issues of somebody not being aware that there is a street intersection at that location without a street light there. Okay, someone like to make a motion to that effect? Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insara? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Um, and the second one is on Cedar Grove. Uh, it's in the Crestview uh, subdivision. Um, it's a more modern subdivision. It, it, it's surprising that there isn't a street light on this street. This is um, essentially, if you know, Crestview makes a big horseshoe. And, and kind of Cedar Grove kind of connects the, the top of the, the horseshoe. And there's a, a couple. Street, right? Excuse me. It's a small street. It's a, it's a small street. It's about a little over 500 feet in length. Um, but given that length and, and the spacing of the streetlights on Crestview and the other uh, side streets that come off of that, th there's there's streetlights about every 250 feet at the corners and intersections. Um, however, on along this stretch, there is no streetlight at the mid, at that mid block. Um, it is a little more expensive than the other one because uh, the streetlight at Bryan and uh, Arnold is on an existing uh, electric pole, uh, so it's a fairly simple cost. Here, there's underground cost entrenching that's involved in uh, installing a new pole in the light. Should the developer put the street? That's that's why I said when I started that it's surprising that this. Subdivision was approved without a street light on that street, but it, for some reason, it, there was no street light approved uh, at that mid block location. You said it was a newer subdivision, but I want to point out it wasn't under your watch. It was not under my watch. It was, you know, this subdivision was probably built probably uh, maybe Tomorrow, early Tomorrow. 90s. Al Herman. Under Al Herman. Um, maybe early 90s. Crestview was. I'm not sure about the uh, street. Yes. Uh, that street is one that, of that street was part of the original subdivision. Yes. You are right, the screen was in, but it was never developed. The, the, uh, the lots were never developed. The screen was never developed. Yeah, it was the kind of board that time. Not the engineer, though. <laughs> I'm sure the resolution was correct. <laughs> All right, so would someone like to make a motion to approve that street light based on $2,500? About $2,500 until they do the actual um, measuring and everything. That, that was the estimate that we got from, uh, and both of these are, we, we received estimates from Atlantic Sea Electric before I made the presentation before you to make sure that you, you knew the cost because all these costs are made out of the street lighting account. Do you think uh, it's a safety cash. issue? I do, considering that, that neighborhood and the lack of street lights on that. I think based area. on the engineer's feelings of safety issue, I'll make that motion to approve this one. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insera? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Someone like to make a motion to pay the bills. I hereby move that all claims submitted for payment at this meeting be approved and incorporated full of the minutes of this meeting. Second, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. 
Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insera? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. There are two municipal uh, department reports, Division of EMS and Municipal Court. Uh, they would be available tomorrow at the clerk's office, but I'll make a motion to uh, to accept these uh, reports. Second. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insera? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, at this time, uh, we'll open up for uh, public um, opportunity to address the uh, Township Committee. Would someone like to come up and address the Township Committee at this time? Um, and if you would, um, I know you know the, the drill, but your name and your address for the record. My name is Russell Morano with the Fire Meadow Drive. Just got a couple of questions. Uh, as far as uh, the streets that you want to repay, my question is, what's in, uh, in the works of, of, of your rules for any utility company that wants to open a road? Uh, if you have a newly paid road, do you send out letters in advance to the utilities companies to say, hey, we're going to open a road, you have X number of days if you're going to put something in there to tear it up? Uh, the other thing is, when they have to repay or fix the patch, whatever, whatever they open, how long are they uh, obligated to make sure it doesn't sink down? Uh, what happened, I live on Red Oak Drive, and they, they came down and they ran gas down towards my house. And the piece that they ran in, and the road had only been paved like a year or two before, but the piece that they ran down, it, it sinks in. It's something right now. And all I'm trying to say is, I, I used to work for a utility company. We used to get notices, number one. Number two, some towns had it there. We had to pave side to side, from one side of the street to the other, even though we did a strip along one, one, one edge. Uh, what could be done like in a gas company is to take, if there is a couple of houses on my block that they didn't hit yet, but that are on the opposite side of their main line, is to go in and put in a line to the inside of the curb, right, between the sidewalk and the curb, and have it ready for when whoever moves in there and wants gas, so they don't have to rip up the street. What I'm trying to say here mainly is, I suggest you take a look at your uh, rules or ordinances, whatever, for street openings. So if we're going to spend the money to fix roads, that's well enough. But let's keep them fixed, and let's make the utilities that are responsible. If they know they're going to open it, it's a shame I saw on, on Stagecoach Road, they pay for a piece, and all of a sudden, they're digging within two weeks. You know, the county did that, but still, that, that's what happens. It happens on the state roads, too. It happens on the state roads, too. Yeah, but that's it. Paul might be able to tell you for Paul Seelman then. Um, before a large project like this, we would send notices, and usually on an annual basis, we send notices to South Jersey Gas and Verizon and different utility companies to let them know what our uh, future uh, street repaving lists are. Uh, there's been occasions where uh, I actually delayed some streets because I know South Jersey Gas was coming into some streets, so we kind of waited a year to do some streets. We did that all over on the um, Red, Red Wish in, in some streets. So, um, yeah, that's something that we do uh, work with utility companies to make sure that they move that ahead. But the gas company might be running a line. Verizon should work at the same time the streets open and lighting also. Both, you know, share the trench, so to speak, in different condos will share the trench. There's a lot of areas in town that do not have fiber running in the gate. Especially, I know, Verizon, we don't have the fibers in our area. But it's kind of tough. It's got to hit, it's got to come up to fire very, very soon. But in either case, just a chance now to take a look at your rules or whatever and maybe tweak them up to get them updated. Uh, the other thing uh, that I have a question on is on your mobile home uh, relicensing uh, renewals, what is, how is it when you uh, have a, a mobile home? Is there a, a fee for a license? Yes. And at this given time, if, if it's going to be renewed, is that fee now going to go up? The fee hasn't been changed for quite some time. There is a fee. Um, I don't. I defer to Barbara as to what it is. It's a licensing fee. It's not a real estate fee. The, the real the real estate owner pays real estate taxes. Um, this is just a fee to operate it. I think most of these are seasonal, if I'm not mistaken. One of them is year round. No, most of these are permanent. No, these are permanent. Oh, these are permanent. I, okay, one's seasonal and the other is the other way around. One is seasonal and the other is permanent. But, but in other words, do these trees get looked at over the time, so to speak? They, they are fees have been looked at in the past year. 
that our construction fees uh, have been looked at and, and adjusted. Uh, I think we did our road ramp fees two years ago. Um, our our uh, line fees, I don't think we looked at them. Uh, mobile homes, I don't think we looked at campers. We haven't that probably four or five years. Mobile home fees? That's probably not four or five years. We have looked at fees in the overall general. The suggestion is, is, I think it's about time. But it's 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 also, also, all these businesses, though, do pay real estate taxes. Understand. And well, what that happens when you take a campground or a mobile home park, and when there's no longer feasible to operate between taxes and fees and all that, it's going to turn into a 24 or 25 mile subdivision for kids in the school system. Uh, that's, 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 uh, I don't want to call it a threat type thing. If it's, it's, so be it. So be it. You know, that those businesses that they're there, I'm sure if they were not making money, we're not turning around, they wouldn't be there now. Uh, and the one final thing I have is, uh, as far as uh, the code enforcement was, uh, condemning a, a property. There's a couple other properties right on uh, Route 610 that are totally unsafe, totally unhealthy. I mean, the building's falling down. And that's been, I ride past it many times over the last few years, and it just seems to stay there. Nothing's happening. How does, well, what does the code enforcement officer do? If he's riding around, he's got to have seen as he or she. Where was it then? By the railroad tracks, a couple of houses in. They've, they've been working on that with that property owner uh, at various stages. Yeah, well, you can see, I'm sure, Paul, you see that house. That thing's ready to drop. And, uh, and it's, uh, I, I have not made an inspection. I know the construction official is aware of it, and I know the zoning officer has no, sent not, something. You, know, you have a town, it's, it's the looks of the town, the neighborhood, I mean, just bring everything there. But as far as the safety factor, if anybody goes in there, that thing is ready to decay. And yet it's still standing there. Uh, yeah, the case. There's actually a couple of them at the Bill of Code for an office is working on it. One of the Tyler Road and there's a couple more. Yeah, but I think that we should take care of that. So, you know, you're going to pass. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, thank you for the public comments at this time. Um, I'll close the public portion of the meeting and entertain a motion. Mr. Newman. I uh, hereby move the resolution to incorporate into the minutes authorized by the Township Committee to enter into executive session for the following matter of pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. Number one, contract negotiation, cell tower console. Number two, contract negotiation, triad advisory services. Team. I also include my motion to estimate time and circumstances for which the discussion of the closed session could be exposed to the public as follows. A. Is anticipated that the matter discussed in closed session be exposed to the public upon the determination of the Township Committee. The public is no longer served by such confidentiality. And B, with respect to contract negotiation, such matters will be made public when negotiations have ceased and there is no longer a reason for confidentiality. Second. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Insera? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion's carried. Thank you all. Have a great evening.